Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we wanted to bring you a fish that we think is awesome, Pseudotrophius ACI. It's an Imbunus cichlid that we absolutely love, so we wanted to share it with you, so stay tuned. So what we're looking at here is the 75 gallon Imbuna tank. I'm going to put a card in the upper right hand corner. We've actually talked about how to set up a tank like this before. Uh, so the Pseudotrophius ACI, they are the blue fish with the yellow dorsal and yellow tail fin. Uh, you can see them over on the left-hand side. The one over there in the sand is trying to get a female uh, interested. Uh, these fish come from Lake Malawi. Because these fish are from Lake Malawi, we tried to keep the water parameters fairly consistent in the upper 70s to around 80. pH is usually somewhere right around 8. It comes out of our tap at 7, 8, but in this tank it's right around an 8. And we've got relatively hard water. Uh, Size-wise, they, they're pretty large for an imbuna. Males will get around 6 inches, females slightly smaller. Uh, what I like about them is the coloration. And so you can see here again that blue body with the yellow tail fin, the yellow dorsal fin. And the males and females pretty much have the same color. Sometimes the males will be slightly darker, especially around breeding season. The other interesting thing about these fish is their colors will change depending on substrate. We've talked about it before. I'll put a card up in the upper right hand corner. But the ACI, at least for us, when we get them on darker substrate, they get a very, very dark blue. Here you can see they're quite a bit lighter, but if you throw them on a darker substrate, they'll get a very dark blue, and the yellow in their fins tends to stand out a little bit more. Now their temperament, I would say they're one of the more docile or less aggressive Imbunas. Uh, certainly in this tank, they're on the less aggressive side. and But they get along well with the fish that are in the tank currently. Uh, tank mates... If I were starting out with these fish, I would probably consider them uh, pretty good tank mates for yellow labs, which you see in this tank, uh, rusty cichlids, which are really cool, which we don't have in this tank. Uh, so some of the, the not as aggressive uh, Ambuna cichlids, you know, some people might say that keeping them with the Johannes that we have in here, even the red zebras, might not be a good mix. But so far, it's worked out great. The one thing I will say with the Pseudotrophius ACI is this is a fish that I like to keep in larger numbers if possible. We've got four or five in this tank, and they do something interesting, and it's not something I've seen in a lot of other Mbunas, and I'm not even necessarily sure if it's really widespread, but these fish really like to be around one another, and if you look at them, they're, they're usually next to one another. Uh, I would say even the males, for the most part, they're, they're not really overly aggressive towards one another. Uh, being a more mellow Imbuna fish, but I've seen them almost in a schooling type behavior. Uh, what's interesting is I, I had one of them in a 150 gallon and it didn't have other ACI to hang out with and it chose a species 44 uh, Lake Victorian cichlid to kind of hang out with and that ACI followed that species 44 everywhere that fish went for years. And I just thought that was pretty interesting. I found a little buddy and just literally followed him everywhere. And they never picked on each other. That was just what they did. These fish are relatively easy to feed. Uh, we generally feed tetra cichlid flakes. We've got new life spectrum pellets that they enjoy. Uh, occasional frozen brine shrimp. And they seem to really like, more than the other fish in this tank, algae wafers with high spirulina content. They really like to chow down on those things. And so that's often uh, a nice treat for them. Uh, tank size, this 75 gallons, uh, probably about as small as I would go. I suppose you could keep a breeding group in a 55. But again, this is a larger imbuna. And what's interesting about these fish compared to a lot of the other imbuna, they will swim mid-water, even on the upper part of the tank, where a lot of the imbuna cichlids like to be very close to the substrate and the rocks. Uh, these guys will swim more mid-water. So ideally, you know, that 55 gallons, 75 that you're looking at here, you could probably keep a male and a few females in a 40 breeder uh, if you were just in a breeding situation. But I, I do like the 75 or larger for these fish overall. Uh, the, the decorations you see in this tank are relatively sparse. We've got a little bit of Texas Holy Rock in the center. Again, there's a couple you know, ways to think about this. Some people say keep more rock and give them territory. Other people say give less rock so nobody claims a territory. I found, especially with these fish, the ACI, uh, they don't really need structure. 
As you're watching this video, you're going to see some of the males. Uh, they will dig a pit in the sand, usually off on the corners of the tanks, and try to entice females to come in there and uh, lay some eggs and, and release eggs so that they can be fertilized. And that's really what they do. And I've I've seen them spawn a number of times in this tank. We've we've had a number of spawns from this tank, and the male will usually dig that pit, and then uh, the females will start dropping the eggs. So that's that's pretty much how they breed. So uh, the male will get him in the pit here, and then we'll start to uh, quiver and, and, and get the female in there. The female starts releasing the eggs, and then the female will pick those eggs up in her mouth, and then she'll start biting at the egg spot of the male, and he will uh, fertilize the eggs when the eggs are in the female's mouth. Now, the females will generally hold those eggs for quite some time, usually three, we three weeks or slightly longer. Uh, during that time, she's not doing a whole lot of eating. One of the things that we do with just about every Mbuna that you see in this tank is when we notice a female is holding, we will pull her out of that tank, uh, put her in a 10 gallon so she can kind of relax and not have to be worried about what the other fish are doing. I found if you leave the fish in a community setting like this, uh, holding, she will either eat the eggs or the fry or the other fish will do that in very short order. So at least in a community setting like this, it is quite necessary for us to remove the females, put her in a 10, and then let her hold to term, and then she'll release the fry uh, when she's ready to do that. And again, that's about three weeks, maybe three to four weeks max. And here we're looking at some fry that are probably in the neighborhood of, well, maybe six to eight weeks old. Uh, this was the last batch that we got. The color's a little bit off. We tend to keep a lot of these 10 gallons not quite as bright. I just find it more relaxing for the females and the fry are relatively comfortable. You can see them up here right at the front. Cool thing, not that long after the fry are released, they start to get that nice blue color. Uh, this is the yellow tail variety. There's also a white tail, uh, white fin variety as well. So they're both really cool. Uh, parental care, the females do care for the fry and they're they're somewhat aggressive, but again, in a community setting, I found it, it just hasn't worked well for us keeping Mbunas and trying to raise the fry in, in this community tank here. Uh, we generally pull the female after about a week or so after she, she's released the fry just to get her back eating and, and back in the old environment. Fry are super easy to care for, as with most Mbunas and the ACI are no different. They're super aggressive eaters. They will eat live baby brine shrimp right from the start, crushed flake food, and that's pretty much what we feed the fry uh, up until the time where they are juveniles, and then we shift them off of the brine, live baby brine shrimp, and we'll give them a lot more of the, the micro pellets from New Life Spectrum and the cichlid flakes and some frozen brine shrimp. Uh, not really any issues raising the fry at all. So if you're really interested in breeding these fish, my suggestion would be, uh, because the males and females look so similar, Probably buy four, five, six of them uh, when they're juveniles, relatively small, maybe an inch, inch and a half or so in size. Let them grow up together. And based on those numbers, if you've got four to six, there's a really high likelihood that you're going to get at least one male and one female. Again, ideally, it'd be nice to have a male and three or four females. But buy them young, see what you get, and almost inevitably you're going to get at least a male and a female that can start giving you some fry later on. And they, they breed relatively small. I, I think we got our first batch of ACI. The fish were maybe in the 3-inch range or so. So positive aspects of this fish. Great color, great personality, not super aggressive. At least for us, they tend to like to hang out in a group. So that's kind of cool to see when you've got three or four of them. Not a whole lot of challenge. They they are a little bit on the larger side when it comes to Mbunas, so you want to keep that in mind uh, when you have a tank going. So, uh, But great fish. Uh, definitely recommend them. All right, everyone, so that's Pseudotrophius ACI. We love that fish. Uh, even though it's an Mbunas cichlid, it's not super aggressive. We like the behavior that we see from it. It's been really exciting for us to keep. Highly recommend. If you get a chance to keep it, definitely do so. So if you like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.